this is Sassy77. I hope everyone is doing well. So since I'm talking about Star Wars today, um, I have included my introduction video that was done by the very talented um, GFX Kate, and I will have her link on um, the description of this video. And welcome all these new subscribers from my Star Wars Theory video. I really appreciate it. Did not expect that to take off and did not expect so many subscribers to come in. And I think a couple of subscribers have come in thanks to some of my activity on X these days. As you saw last week, well, about a week and a half ago, the, the video that I um, published of my visit to Western North Carolina back in May just showing the beautiful, um, the beauty of that area. And on X, I've been pretty active about trying to keep that. So, uh, try to keep Western North Carolina and its effects from Hurricane Helene in your thoughts. And if you can donate or volunteer now, um, that would be great. But if you can't, uh, this will be a long-term recovery for them. So, there will always be the need. But check that video out because in that video, I have links. And we are already interrupted by JJ. Uh, so, we'll see if I have to get this out of here. So, we'll, we'll try to continue maybe and she'll get bored and move on. If I have to stop, I will and uh, pick up when I can get her distracted. Uh, so that's the thing. I have, you know, the cats. And um, since I have stuff moved around right now, she's curious. I thought she had checked it out enough. Um, anyhow, um, I want to thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to do a different video than I've ever done before. And that's just talking about something that has been, it came on my mind because of Halloween. And I'll explain why. I have a great niece um, that's three years old. She was born in 2021 and I had a Grogu shirt on when I came to visit sometimes. Uh, my niece didn't let a lot of people, her mom didn't let a lot of people visit because of, um, COVID. So COVID and then the whooping cough was going around really bad that year too. So for her, I think it was mostly the whooping cough that they were worried about. I don't think they were worried too much about COVID because I'm not sure that they, at that point, that, no, JJ, move. Okay, so anyhow, come on now. I can't even see my screen. Move, baby. Go on. Okay, so <laughs> I have this picture propped up. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, that's just how it goes. And I don't know how, I don't know that I can edit this out. But anyhow, so I noticed that, you know, she was really, whenever I was wearing my Grogu shirt, she was really transfixed by Grogu. She really liked to look at him. So I bought her a lovey. That's a Grogu lovey. And to this day, she still sleeps with it. And when she was teething, she would teeth on his ear. So he's a little chewed down. And they've actually bought like a backup and she won't touch the backup because um, she had lost it or her mom had lost it. But anyhow, she she just loves her little Grogu. Well, there's nothing really for her to see because the Mandalorian is too much for her because she's three. Um, it's also, um, even if I take some of those wonderful clip videos on YouTube of just his cuteness, I still think it's hard for her because she's into animations now and cartoons because of her age. So I have always said, and anyone who follows me on X or has seen me online, that this scene, that this is depicted here, I couldn't find a good clip. And I don't know how to use clips yet. So uh, <laughs> this scene, I actually rewatched a clip of this scene when I thought about making this video. Um... It got me, cause look, let's. Uh, <laughs> if you came here and you've seen some of my other videos, some of my rant videos, or whatever, I definitely am an OG trilogy prequel fan. My whole life, you know, my whole life, and I tried to like the sequels. Found, you know, found more and more problems with it, and I didn't really like a lot of the things that were going on there. But I loved The Mandalorian. I really thought that that felt like a love letter to Lucas. And I know a lot of people don't feel the same that are OG fans, but I feel like I walked the path of both. 
Um, season three was... <laughs> I did not like season three. <laughs> there were some cute things in it, but, you know, whatever. But this scene right here, to me, I already had to read the spoilers, okay? I had to read the spoilers. Um, I'm... If the show is really good to me and they have a main characters in peril all the time, even though my mind knows they're not going to kill him, I still, they still put him in pretty dangerous situations. So after chapter four, where they let it to the, to the thing and Kara saved him, um, you know, it, I just needed the spoiler. So even though I knew that this was happening, it's still, I was still very emotional at seeing Luke be Luke, and I was, I cried harder <laughs> when, and I knew he was going to be there, R2-D2 came out and started beeping his happy beep, because I've said it before, the sequels fucked him over too. I mean, they sidelined R2-D2, like how do you do that? And I mean, and season, I think episode I think episode it's nine or whatever. I think it showed that him and uh, BB-8 could coexist. So you didn't have to sideline R2 and have him separated for years from Luke. That's a whole nother conversation. But when he comes out from behind Luke and he's beside Luke and he's just, you know, I cried harder. I'm, hey, I'm a girl, but I cried harder. But the, the two of these together, the way that... In that whole scene, the music, oh my gosh, the music. The music is just amazing in this scene. But the fact that, you know, you have them all excited and they they talk to each other. You have Grogu cooing and you have him doing his little thing where he's very curious and you see R2-D2 doing his curious thing and then he starts jumping when he's excited and beeping and <laughs> I can't find the meme. I was looking for the meme. I cannot find the meme. I saved it on my um, old phone. But it said, what do you think R2-D2 was saying to Luke? Because he, and so it said, oh my God, it's a fucking baby Yoda. It's so cute. Or something like that. I could not find that one. But anyhow, the idea hit me somewhere in here and in um, Book of Boba Fett. They really should have done an animated show of these two getting in trouble or doing things like little 15 minute for kids because kids, they're not keeping like for my niece. And this is what, and I come back to Halloween. The reason why it hit me even harder Halloween, because I've mentioned this several times and a couple people, I think it was um, Lily, 300 Mirrors, like, oh, that's a great idea. I would so love to watch that even as an adult. It would be so cute to think about what kind of trouble they could get to. I mean, could you imagine, like, they bring, you know, the, the animated stuff like Rebels and stuff would bring in some of the main characters and you could kind of get away with bringing them in. You know, somehow you have Leia and... C-3PO possibly, you know, um, not Ben, but I think at this time, I don't think they have him yet. Um, or she might be pregnant with him in this timeline. Because I can't remember how old Ben is. Um, and this is five years after Return of the Jedi. And supposedly, I think Favreau has come out and said right before season three that he was with Luke for three years. You could go in and build that. But anyhow... They could bring in C-3PO. And could you imagine him, like, meeting Baby Yoda or Grogu? And, you know, and then maybe he's, oh, well, goodness gracious me, you're so tiny. I've never seen one of your species. Because uh, I don't think you ever met Yoda. I've never seen one of your species. And then he talks. He's like, oh, my goodness. I'm performed in over 7 million forms of communication. And I cannot recognize this dialect at all because he's a baby and he coos, you know, stuff like that. That could be adorable, like adorable little side thing. I mean, they could come up with so much, but I'm just going ahead and saying, Lucasfilm and Disney, you fucking idiots. You should have come up with this idea um, and it should have been in production and ready to go before you ever did Book of Boba. Uh, honestly, that's what you should have done. The reaction of people... Of these two meeting 
and theories of possibly R2's met him before and he recognizes him. You could do a little bit of that. Now we know he didn't save R2. R2 didn't save him. There was a big um there was a big theory that maybe he somehow got hold of him and concealed him and got him to safety. Um I it was a big theory, but that didn't happen. We already know that, but maybe you know, he came across him in the temple one time. And think about it. If you had like a little animated feature of these two um, hanging out and doing funny things, but they can't, they can't really communicate because Grogu doesn't talk and can't talk, you know? But I think it's more relatable for kids that way because my niece actually dressed up as Grogu for Halloween. She had three different event she went to popular kid three different events but what she trick-or-treated in in the neighborhood was her Grogu outfit and the reason why she wanted it or they they decided to put her in it because she's about she's tall for her age so she wouldn't be a very convincing Grogu at some point because she's not tiny anymore but is she the pictures of them putting it on her for the first time, she's holding her lovey because that's the only thing she has to relate to it. And I thought about that and I'm like, okay, well, she's so, oh my God, y'all. She was so precious. She was absolutely adorable. Um, I say that she's so cute. She'll make your uterus cry. And if she's dressed as Grogu, she makes it cry harder. <laughs> But sorry, that's for the ladies, guys. Sorry, that's for the ladies. They know they know what I'm they know of what I speak. Um, but anyhow, I just thought, well, maybe she's old enough for the clips of him doing cute things. But I just don't think she would relate to it. I think I've sent those clips to her mom a couple of times, and of course her mom loves it, and her mom loves Baby Yoda um and Grogu. And they call him Grogu, by the way. I'm proud of that. Because none of them have watched The Mandalorian in that. Yeah, that's the sister that doesn't like, <laughs> doesn't watch Star Wars. <laughs> I commandeered her son. I got him into Star Wars. Tried to get the baby's mom interested in Star Wars about three or four years ago. Well, be well before she got pregnant. And she, I made the mistake of showing her the prequels first. I should have shown her in order of release. So that's always my recommendation. But uh, let me just say this real quick. He always makes an appearance in a video. That would be my first Grogu. And then I will link the I will link this video. But this is the R2D2 popcorn and beverage container <laughs> that I got. It's my biggest R2D2. I really want to get one of those um animatronic ones because he's always been my favorite droid. Always. So the two of these, because this, of course, Cara Dune is my favorite human character of the Disney era. And this is my favorite, of course, if you've seen some of my videos. And let's see. Let's see. All right. There you go. Now go. I didn't want her to knock it over. Okay, get down, baby. Anyhow, I think I could talk around her for a second. But you know, I just thought that it was kind of sad. I mean, they could, you know, I'm not a writer. It's just an idea. But wouldn't it be precious? Um, and again, I have said in my videos that I'm in full support of them decanonizing everything after. If even it, if that meant that we could get our legendary characters back in the way that they were, I would, and at losing Grogu and Kara. Um, they could be worked back in. If you had a good creative, they could work those characters back in. Um, because, you know, there's just a couple of different ways that they could reboot. Well, while I'm here, <laughs> there's two ways that they could do a complete decanization of everything. And one way is brutal. Let me tell you the first way. This is just me. This is just me. Okay, we know KK would never do this, the Terminator of Star Wars. Um, we know that she'll never do that, right? There's no way. But anyhow, you would, you could have a show or a movie come back and have it revealed. <laughs> I know it's awful. <laughs> Have it revealed that Luke 
dreamed all of this or it was given to him by Anakin as a force ghost or Ben as a force ghost and be and he's be he's been told at the end of it this is what happens if you go down this path and maybe that path is forcing people to change to to choose a Mandalorian life or Jedi life, cutting them off from their family. Because we know, I've, I've only delved a little bit into the expanded universe, um, or the EU. We know that that's not how he runs the new Jedi Order. I mean, he's still attached to his family. The lessons of the prequels in in the um, in all of George Lucas's uh, interviews and and stuff like that is good versus evil is that the balance is evil is gone the that the jedi were too um uh, dogmatic that they never should have um cut people off from their family or said that you know no attachments and stuff like that that and especially try to have the person who had attachments formed come in and then get rid of them I mean, there's no way Luke would get rid of his attachments to his family and his friends after he just redeemed Vader. So, what they could have is, you know, they could go back as far, maybe they have um, Grogu or a different one, right? Or a different uh, person that he, or, or a being that he's trying to put into his new order before Grogu. Technically, because we're going to say this is a dream and everything is erased after that and it's a brand new slate. And then you bring in EU and you recast everyone um, if you want to tell those stories because they're younger. And you can do it. If the stories are good, you can recast Han, Luke, and Leia. That Recasting isn't the problem. And nobody wants to see dead eye CGI. They did it. It was fine for this because it was short, right? But to me, if, and then of course they had the rumor that there was going to be a show of Luke training Grogu, right? And that wouldn't have worked if in live action, in my opinion, because you'd have to, it would be too expensive. You would have to CGI, so do it in animation or recast, okay? Recast is fine, KK. We're not that any of them or the shills would be watching this, but recasting is fine if it's done well. I mean, Billy Lord looks enough like her mom, Carrie Fisher. She could play her and don't CGI her face. I mean, there's no problem with making Leia. You know, she could dye her hair dark or wear or wear a wig. I mean, it's whatever. These people are so freaking stupid. They don't understand us fans. We can accept it because we'd rather see those stories well written than a CGI Mark Hamill on somebody's face or, you know, um, Carrie Fisher or H Harrison Ford CGI. Uh, we don't want to see that mess. I, I don't want to see it. You're not doing the Lucas level of um, special effects that he used to do. So if you're not doing that level with the, all the money you put into the crap of light and everything else, then no, we don't want it. Anyhow, that was my first thing. It's a, it's a dream, right? It's a, it's a vision that he said that. If you could... It's the EU. If you are adapting the EU, you can still bring Grogu and Mando in because technically they're born during the Clone Wars. Well, he's born the same year as Anakin. And Mando was born before the Clone Wars. So you could probably bring them in and just, it's going to be a different type of story, right? He's not going to make him choose. He goes to, you know, he goes and hangs out with Luke, learns, and he has visits or, you know, the the video calls or whatever. Okay, so then here's my brutal one. And I, I told people this in a comic book store and they looked at me like, wow, that's, that's kind of brutal. I wasn't expecting a woman to say that. But Dave <laughs> Filoni brought in The World Between the Worlds and used it to retcon Ahsoka's death because he can't let go of his favorite character. It's a little weird, actually. Um, but he can't let go and he's inserting her into everything and all this mess. Um, this is what I think. <laughs> totally brutal. I did not watch Ahsoka. I, if you've watched my videos, Kenobi kind of finished me. And yes, I know, people before you, I got wonderful comments about trying out Andor. I haven't done it yet. 
Maybe I will soon. I'm just kind of in that weird phase. But anyhow, um, I've heard wonderful things about Andor so that I should try it. And I might. Um, and I might try Skeleton Crew just out of curiosity. Just, you know, I don't, I don't think it looks like Star Wars. But I do think it looks interesting. So it look it doesn't look like it's driven by agenda either. And from the simple fact of there's rumors that Lucasfilm execs hate it. So that must mean it's not agenda driven. You don't see it in the trailers. And there hasn't been... I mean, they were talking about the Acolyte a year or two before. With all this agenda-laden things, the press was kicking up about a month, two, two weeks before... It's not really kicking anything up. So there's a possibility. But anyhow, I, I know that they use World Between Worlds. They're trying to teach uh, what's her name, the force. Nobody dies uh, getting, uh, getting hit by a lightsaber. But somehow, what they need to do is you had the whole thing where she's alive because Ezra... Um, pulled her out of her fight with Vader because he killed her, right? It was inferred that he killed her. Ezra pulls her out. Vader doesn't know she's still alive or whatever. Um, so they've been in a world between worlds and whether it's Ahsoka or a movie, they start to see that Ahsoka living was wrong, that she needed to die where she died. And that everything that has happened after that is because of her surviving. Because it shouldn't have been that way. Um, she's the one who was pressuring Luke to cut off Grogu, right? She's the one who said in the movie or in the in the Mandalorian that attachments caused it, I believe, she said, because remember, she is dogmatic, even though they kicked her out or she decided to leave, she's still dogmatic. She she had concerns about Grogu being attached to Mandalorian, right? Or to Din. So to me, like, she's the one who probably, you know, had a lot of sway. So maybe her having sway and her pushing Luke in a certain direction is the reason and somehow somebody tells her that and she realizes oh my god yes so i think that they should go in and destroy world of the world the world between worlds that takes out your possibility of another universe and she's in it and she dies too like she dies because she's supposed to die whether it's that she goes back, maybe she goes back in where she's where she gets killed by Vader, and on her way out, she destroys it and she dies. Because then that would be like, then that would give Dave what he wants. She's so important. It's her. It's the key. She's the key to everything, right? But yeah, when I said that in a comic book shop, they looked at me like, "Wow, I didn't think she was gonna say that." I, I kind of like that idea. Anything that could do that, or they'll just do what they did, or just do simple. Just do simple. Just say, all right, we're decanonizing. You hated it. We're just, we're starting brand new from 2012. We're bringing back the EU, and we're just going to adapt that, and we might create new characters. And we might do some animations, like, you know, to, to, whatever to to um get kids because this is the problem they're losing generational fans because you can't watch it together like the mandalorian's too much for her now i'm gen x so somehow they thought that from the time i was probably her age or even younger star wars was perfectly okay and we see burnt skeletons in there so anyhow but it that's just kind of like my little fanfic that i would think would this right here, to me, is a lost opportunity. I mean, they could have just rolled this out and had kids involved because I believe Grogu merch sales are down. They lost, And I've said this multiple times in my videos that they lost, they didn't understand the people that came in for Grogu. And they thought that these were just merchant merchandise people who were collectors or whatever, but... I actually in, was on Facebook and I was in some of these groups and <laughs> there was no merch to begin with, right? So that was smart. That was smart because they didn't want, it was a good surprise. 
And then they kind of ramped it up and they had great merch. And you've seen my Galactic Snacking Rogu video is my best video um, where I play with it, you know, open it up for the first time and stuff. And it's adorable and it's directly relatable. And actually my niece has that toy and she took his, took his toys <laughs> and played with them. But uh, she has her own, but you know, it's just, um, they didn't understand that that base came in and they started watching the show, right? They were following the relationship of this gruff, pretty silent bounty hunter, you know, basically adopting what he first, well, he, he has an asset. Then he felt guilty. Then he saw him as a foundling like himself. All of that story development. And then realizing in season two, he had to give him up because this wasn't the life for him. And we're not going to get, and then they undo it. But a lot of them were so invested in that relationship. Like they were doing fan art. Like, oh gosh, he lives like nine. They found, you know, they started watching other Star Wars and like, Oh my gosh, his species lives for 900 years. And so they did fan art of how he would react when, when grow, when, when John dies, you know, maybe he dies old age or whatever, but unless something happens to Grogu and they're not going to have that happen because he used to be their cash cow and he might still be, but they, um, you know, they could have, uh, the, but they were already worried about that and they were so invested in the story story they were invested in that relationship you know my timeline on Facebook was full of people talking about each episode and everything else and then right before season three came out the ones that had not kept up with Book of Boba they're like well do I need to watch the whole thing because I'm not really interested in Boba right so they're like okay these are the two episodes or whatever to, three episodes two or three episodes that you need to watch to figure out why they reunited them and, um, cause I think a lot of them were expecting it to be, they were separated season three, probably doing dual. This is what Din's up to. And this is what Grogu was learning from Luke. We only see his training with Luke in Book of Boba. Um, and it's not enough. It's not enough training. And of course they do the sad way or the, the, you know, the shitty way out. Oh, we're just helping him remember his uh, prior training. He already knows everything. Whatever. You know, that was so stupid. They could have, because they could have brought, brought in the OG, some of the OG people who, who enjoyed that last, uh, that last four minutes of that episode. Um, but they, by sidelining Din Djarin, whether it's because Pedro couldn't do it or whatever, I mean, he's just the voice. It's body actors anyway, but they sidelined that relationship. And in fact, they had me convinced that they were going to kill Din out. I mean, because I just, you know, whatever, but that whole season, I, you could see like the post in that group go down and down and down and down. Like, oh, they're losing interest. Plus, they didn't have really good merch out that was centered around season three. That, you know, Galactic Snacking Grogu makes sense. And it has all the things that you see him eat in season two in the first season. Because he's a little hungry booger. And he's always eating. So, like, I just don't get why they would lose, you know. They, they didn't understand. They thought that they could that these people were just going to blindly buy and blindly watch and they, and they dropped off. And then of course you had the people who dropped off because of Cara, um, Gina Carano getting unfairly fi fired. I hope she wins. Look, just real quickly, y'all. I have a four year degree in history. I don't work in the field, but I studied that era very, very, very closely. I had a whole course in it. When she made that post, I knew exactly what she was saying. Okay. And she's spot on because it's the same thing um, Auschwitz has had pretty close, almost word for word, what Auschwitz wrote, <clears throat> has posted several times. And it's, you know, one of their sayings. But anyhow, I digress. But anyhow, you lost a bunch for that reason. And you lost a bunch because of Kenobi. I only came back and watched season three because I was so invested. And I think a lot of those people did too because they don't have the years you know, these people who were following for that reason, that female audience that they drew in, that they've been chasing and they had it. They had it in their hands. They're so fucking stupid. Sorry, 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 sorry. Didn't mean to do that. I think I've dropped a couple of F-bombs. I'm sorry. 
Sorry, Duck Vader. Well, Duck Vader enjoys it. So, um, anyhow, I just, you know, they just don't understand why they lost them. And they lost them because they sidelined that relationship. You could have drug it out or you could have had a time jump where he's older and has received the training that he needs and he's back. And, and so, again, that's the whole attachment thing. They never should have made him choose like that because that just wasn't what they should have done. I know that they wanted to wipe, they wiped out the EU and all that mess. So I'm just saying, anyhow, you know, I'm a talker. I think I'm going to wrap this up and I want to thank you so much. Um, I, my videos had slowed down in the last month or so because I've been under the weather, had a nasty cold and it has lingered. And, um, I've been feeling better for a couple weeks, but, uh, it's starting to, uh, that little nagging cough, it's just something that's going around um, our area. And it's just the cold. It's just the cold and the cough is slow to go away. It's also about to get to be my busiest time of year at work. So we'll see. Um, I do plan to live stream at some point. Um, I also want to do some readings and reviews of the Star Shatter series by Black Knight, Agmar Virilian. Um, I have a unboxing of that from quite some time ago. I've read the first two books. I just had not had time to review. And I really want to reread them and do a better, more detailed review. Or he's asked me to do readings where I read it out loud. And um, and so I may do that as well. Um, so those are just some ideas that I have. And I do want to thank you for staying this long. And don't tear me up too bad. <laughs> but, you know... I can't help it. I, it maybe it's a, it's a woman thing. And I know some of the, the hardcore uh, female fans don't like him. They just don't like anything Disney does. And I don't blame them. Because, uh, yes, he was clearly a cash jack grab at some point. He might be a MacGuffin or whatever. But he could be used effectively. They just, they were using him effectively. And then dropped the ball. And they could have done this again, something for the kids because he's an o he's an OG kid magnet in my opinion. Um, he's a woman. <laughs> he's a woman and kid magnet. It but the kids you you've got to keep the keep the women and the kids. You've got to give him something cute and interesting to do as long as you have him young, and then. Um, and you have to have that relationship with Din Djarin. Um, I mean, honestly, Pedro at this point is the voice. So you never have him take his mask off and maybe you age him rapidly if you keep him around or whatever. But again, I'm in favor of wiping the slate clean. Maybe you bring him in, but if, as long as they're going to be idiots, this, so anyone, if they ever come up with a, um, an animated show of these two two's adventures on wherever the new Jedi Order temple was that they were building. Them getting into misadventures or just meeting people, meeting the new students, and, you know, and maybe he hits them with a stick. I really don't want them to do that, though. I really don't want them to put in a whole bunch of member berries unless it's something that honors things, right? So, well, I wouldn't want them to do that. But, yeah, I did not mean to talk about my how should they retcon. How should they get rid of? I that could have been a whole nother video. But thank you for staying this long. I appreciate it. Uh, feel free to comment. Don't. I mean, I if you want to tear me up, go ahead. I guess I could take it. I might not respond, but uh, and again, if I'm slow on responses, I do like to try to respond very quickly. This week, I'm going to be so busy at work that um, I. If I love it, if I love your comment and don't respond immediately. Don't, please don't have your feelings hurt. I may do, some people do a video where they respond to comments, they read them and then they respond. If it's that many, again, I may. I should have done that actually with my Disney Star Wars Hates Men, the first one, because it was so, oh, the conversations were so awesome. There was a lot of conversations that, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's an old long one, but anyhow, it's, it, it, those comments, it's a lot of, um, lifelong female fans in there and we have a lot of good conversations and the uh, and someone said we should just why don't you just do a live stream of just where we talk about what we love about old Star Wars and I think that's a good idea too so I'm not sure how to live stream yet but 
that's the plan. Everyone, thank you so much for staying this long. Hopefully, I'm not too much of a word salad. Y'all know I don't script. I just talk as it hits my head. And sometimes I'm coherent and sometimes I'm not. And uh, I appreciate it. And I didn't cough. I didn't cough this whole time. That's good, y'all. It was coming back. But anyhow, thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And have a great day and week. Oh, and please... The news has forgotten them, Western North Carolina and other victims of Hurricane Helene. I'm just focusing on North Carolina because that's where I live in the East. You know, just keep an eye out. Keep If you can't do anything now, maybe after Christmas, maybe whatever, they're going to need it. And just don't forget them, please, because it's still very hard in a lot of areas. They don't have running water. A lot of uh, specific people can't get electricity. They're having to build temporary roads just across a creek. Temporary little walk foot bridges and stuff like that just so people can get out of their property. So they still, areas are opening up, but they're still very cut off areas. And there are, it's a massive, massive devastation. It is the most devastating and deadly um, hurricane to hit North Carolina. And that's saying something and for it to hit the mountains. Um, there's five to ten, five to six hours from the coast of a drive and the high elevation, it's very rare. So thank you so much and, uh, see you next time. Goodbye.